In this video, I'm going to go over the week 12 homework assignment, and uh, we're going to build grep in Java for this homework assignment. If you don't know what grep is, it's a really awesome Unix command line utility. Uh, you basically input a regular expression and a file path you want to search on, and a um, uh, the grep command will search for the contents, or it'll search through the contents of that file for uh, the search term you entered. So here we have grep, it's searching through a file called fruit list for the word apple, and apple gets printed out. So it's very uh, uh, kind of universal and uh, useful thing. Uh, you can even pipe the output of one command into grep. So if you want to search for the name of a process, you can you can pipe the output of ps, which is the process list command in Unix, and you can search for every process named that. I'll actually demonstrate that right here. Uh, I can run ps aux, and I can pipe the output into grep, and I can search for the word Java, and you can see I have uh, Eclipse running here. So you can see this is the command line um, arguments for Eclipse and it's running user bin Java right here. Kind of cool. So grep uh, Unix, um, most uh, Linux operating systems have it. Uh, Mac has grep also. Um, Windows computers don't have grep, but um, uh, you're missing out on a whole lot of other stuff if you're using Windows anyway. So. Back to the uh, assignment, um, we have uh, basically three inputs you're going to grab from the user. You want a, a uh, input file you're going to read the data from, and that's equivalent to the file part of grep, and you want a search string, so we're also going to grab a search string from the user, and instead of writing to the console like grep does, we're going to write the output to a file because we are studying um, file input stream and output streams in this week after all. Uh, it's it's simpler than it sounds. I have a really great example here for you of simultaneously reading and writing to a file. You can use a buffered reader uh, wrapped around a file reader and you can pass the file in, file path in there and you have a file writer. You can pass the file path in there and wrap that around a buffered writer and you can simultaneously read these lines in, um, do some transformation on the text, and what you're actually going to do is search the text, and then you can write it. Um, and this will write out. And finally, you're going to close both the reader and the writer. Uh, and you'll do some extra stuff in here, like you'll count how many matched. You'll say, if it did this right, you're only going to write sometimes. And you're also going to print some of these lines to the console. But this is essentially what you're going to want to do, uh, something like this. You can also alternatively read all of the lines in to an array or a list or something. And then you can uh, do the filtering into another array or a list. And then you can just print out those filtered items. So you can make this as, uh, as complicated as you want. You can read everything to memory. Or you can do this very simple, elegant way where we open a stream for reading and a stream for writing simultaneously. Totally up to you. All that I ask is that you do these 12 steps. So uh, it's going to, uh, what I'm going to do is be grading you on if you had the user enter the data correctly and you correctly filtered the data. You can do this however you want though. Um, so at a high level, uh, let's, let's take a look at, at your input and output. So at a high level, let's say, um, you had a file called trafficdata.csv and it had these lines of text. This is a CSV file, a comma separated value file. If you don't know what that is, you should Google it because you should know that by now. Um, but this is a comma separated value file. So we're gonna read that in. Your program's gonna first prompt the user to enter a CSV file to read from. So in this case, we're going to enter trafficdata.csv then the program is going to prompt the user to enter a search string. So let's say for this run of the program, we enter the string cottage. And because we know cottage appears in here, uh, we're, let's see what happens when, that, when, we, when we input cottage for a search string. And then finally, the program is going to prompt the user to enter a CSV file to write the output to. 
and this file should not exist. So you can enter something like output1.csv. So I have to stress, the first file, it must exist and it must have data in it. So it should look something like this or whatever you want to put in it, it doesn't matter. Um, the second input is just a string. You just want to read a string from the user. So you could do scanner.nextline and read in what the user enters. Just make sure you prompt the user to enter something. And then finally, you're going to prompt the user to enter um, a CSV file to write to. And this file should not exist because you're writing the output to a fresh file. So it should not exist. Okay. So what will happen if we enter the word cottage? Our program should filter out only the lines that contain cottage right here. And then our output file is going to look exactly like this. That's all. So essentially, again, we're building grep. And instead of writing the output to the console like we did here, we're going to write the output into a file. That's all we're doing. So in detail, uh, a little bit more detail here. Um, you're going to ask the user to enter a name of the input file to read from. This is step one. It should be a CSV file and it must exist. Um, if the input file does not exist or if it's not a CSV file, continue to prompt the user until you get an existing uh, CSV file. So um, in, in step number two, you're going to put this in a while loop, right? You're going to put this in a loop and you're going to make sure the user entered a valid path that meets all these requirements. Um, step number three, ask the user to enter a search string. Uh, and it's just simple as using scanner.nextline, which it will be for all of these. And step number four, you're going to make sure the, enter users, uh, the user entered something three characters long at least. So we want at least three characters we're going to search on. If the user did not enter something three characters long, you're going to make the user re-enter until they do. Again, a while loop. Uh, step number five, ask the user to enter a file path to write the file out to. Whoops, I got a typo. Um, this file path must not currently exist, right? We're going to write the output to a fresh file. The file should not exist. So if it does, you're going to prompt the user to re-enter. So make sure the file path is valid. Make sure um, the file does not exist. If it does exist, prompt the user to re-enter. OK, so now you're at step number seven. You should have all the input from the user. So go ahead and open that file from step number one for reading. You can read all the lines in, or you can open input stream. Just like we did here, we opened an input stream. And then we did a read line in a while loop, and we kept reading it. OK, so. Either way, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you read the data in. OK, step number eight. Open the file path from step number five for writing. So just like this, we can make a file writer, and we're going to write data to it. OK, so we're going to read each line of the file that you open in step seven, and we're going to do a string search. We're going to search on the string to see if it contains the word the user entered. So maybe they entered cottage, maybe they entered grove, maybe they entered south. If they entered south, every single line would match, right? Because you've got south here, you've got south, you've got south in every single line. So if they enter the word south, every single line would be copied over into the other file. Um, so if you do find a match in step 10, you're going to write the line that you just iterated over. So if you do find that this matches this line that you read in, you're going to write it out. If it doesn't match, you're not going to write it out. So also, I would like you to print it to the console. When you're done reading and searching each line, close both of the files, right? So you want to close both of the files, clean up the resources. And finally, you're going to print out the count of the files you wrote. Not the file, not the number of lines you read. You're gonna read. You're gonna print out the count of the number of lines you wrote. So each of these steps is is uh, equivalent in point value, and there are 12 steps, and you've got 100 points total. So do all these steps um, with the combination of these this example code, and I'm gonna give you a little um, a starter here for you. I think you should be in good shape. So I, I'm going to write a, a, a little uh, file called grep. 
homework. I've got a public static void main, and um, we're gonna put a, a scanner at the top level. Uh, new scanner. Okay, and we're gonna make three methods here. We're gonna make three methods. Public. Public. What? So we, we've got three things that we're trying to get from the user. We want a file path, we want a string to search from, and we want another file path. So the first one is going to return a path. Java NIO file, path, right? Okay, read input file. Okay, the second one, it's going to return a string because we want a search string. So the second one's gonna be read search string and we'll return a null again. So this is going to be a to do, a to do, And finally, public path. We're gonna read uh, read uh, output file path. Let's add path here. And again, same deal. You're gonna fill in the rest of the, whoops. You're gonna fill in the rest of the code here, and it'll go something like step number one path input file read so one more thing we're gonna make these static sorry about that we're doing all this from a static context everything's gonna be static read input file step number two Re, uh, sorry, search string, it's gonna be read search string, and finally, step number three of the things you need to get from the user, and whoops, this is a string. Sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, output file, read, output file. All right, that's kind of your, your basic uh, stuff you're gonna get from the user. Now you're gonna go ahead and read in contents of input file. Um, you're going to filter contents. You're going to write um, matching lines to output file. Close up everything. The other thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open output file for writing. And where where's all your validation gonna go? It's gonna go down inside here. You can put the while loops right in here that do the validation. And um, you don't even have to return from these methods until you get valid inputs, right? Very simple, very straightforward. Uh, we, can make, we can make this very easy to follow. So, this is our outline. I'm gonna put this up on GitHub in the homework, and I would like you to start with this outline unless you have a better way to do this. And that is the introduction to the week 12 homework assignment. We're building grep in Java to teach you input, um, input streams and output streams. Thanks for watching.